comes the big guy. We're going to put some tape back up. Okay. Let me get up here. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Hanging out with the Dakota Pure Calves, what I like to call them. But uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about them. Oh, here comes the little helper. She thinks it's feeding time. We just fed. Are you bringing your feed? Don't spill it. Okay. So we made it back. Yes, we had a long 11 hour drive back from South Dakota. It really wasn't that bad. Uh, I got a lot of questions about travel. 11 hours is really not that much of traveling um, for bison. Uh, I know I know some people personally that have driven to Canada and picked up bison and brought them all the way back to, you know, Oklahoma. That's 23, 24, maybe even more hours than that. And those guys just drive straight through. Uh, it, with bison, you don't stop and water them and feed them. It, that's just something you don't do when you're traveling. It's, it's dangerous. Um, and I know you're thinking, well, they're going to starve to death and they, they're going to be really thirsty. Well, yeah, they are, but um, you can't put buckets in there and, and stuff like that and risk, risk uh, them getting hurt, basically, because they're just going to spill the water. They're going to spill the feed. You could put hay in, in a trailer, and that usually works. Um, one for food and uh, two for bedding. You can do that, too. So uh, they traveled really well, and just we just drove straight 11 hours through and made it back to Oklahoma. So, um, but wanted to let you know that we made it back safe and, and everything was good there. We've been taking care of these guys and uh, just trying to keep the weight on them. Cause if you saw our previous video, these calves are much bigger than the ones raised in Oklahoma. There's just something about animals in the North that um, the animals are bigger. I think that has a lot to do with their environment, um, can be the grass and, and, and all that stuff, but also their climate. It's colder up there and, and uh, these animals are built bigger and tougher to handle those conditions, just like they've adapted over time to handling those conditions. So you stay right there. You're doing good. A couple other things is you probably noticed that these guys in the video, they were only wormed one time. They're only worked once a year. And uh, that's also the difference in climate. Uh, the guys up there in, in in the north as well, I like to say, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, those places, parasites and, and worms are not near as bad as they are in the south. That's because of the climate, right? It's all about location, where you live. And uh, those are the sort of deals that, those are the things that we fight with our bison. And so here in the south, um, we have to worm ours at least twice a year. That's what we're dealing with. And uh, it's just different uh, of locations. It could be three states away. They're doing completely something different um, to what we're doing. So that's why we work our bison twice a year is because of the parasites mainly and, and the worms. And they can really get these bison. You got an old tuna can, cat food can, putting your feet in it. I'm extremely excited to see where these heifers go and our bull. I know you guys have mentioned a lot of names in the comments and I really appreciate it. Now that you know, we call this place, you know, the nickname is the Ponderosa. Um, and what comes with that is the movie Bonanza, obviously. Um, and then uh, you guys have shot us the names. Uh, Haas is one of the names that really sticks out to me and like 90% of you mentioned the name Haas. And so uh, I think we're gonna go with that. Uh, I think uh, our bull's name is gonna be Haas. Social media. YouTube, Facebook, you guys have named 
our bull. So I think we're gonna stick with the name Haas. It just fits the image being here at the Ponderosa, just across Timmers Bison Ranch. So um, one of the reasons why we got Haas is because in a couple of years, as we're growing, we'll be able to have at least two bulls. And I know we haven't been able to do that, but as the herd grows with heifer calves like this, in two years, they'll be able to, they'll be able to breed. And so in two years, he'll be able to breed. Uh, and um, he can breed these, these heifers, these heifer calves, he can breed them. And, and he can even breed the other cows that are out there with Big Joe. But as we grow and, and we start to do this and expand, we need another uh, breeding bull. And I think we'll be able to do that with Haas and um, hopefully all of that turns out great. He was the second or third biggest calf, bull calf, uh, when the Dakota Pure worked their uh, bison that way, those, their bison that day. They worked over, we worked over 220 pairs. I didn't do very much, but we worked over 220 pairs. And I think uh, Haas here was like the second or third largest at 611 pounds. Those are huge calves, guys. Um, ours are about half that weight or even less an average. So, um, and that just is like I've explained. It's part of where you live, location, weather, climate, all those things. So, but uh, we're gonna change out right here, starting with these awesome uh, heifer calves and the bull calf um, from South Dakota. So the other great thing about this is you just expand your diversity. You expand your, your, gen, you expand your genetics and, uh, and a lot of bison producers do this. You can ask a lot of bison people. And you heard me talking to Scott, mentioning, you could hear him talk about, he had some cows from Ted Turner's ranch, uh, one of Ted Turner's ranch. He had cows from uh, another property or another ranch. So there's a lots of different people that, uh, you know, spread out the diversity and spread out the genetics. And that's a good way to raise good bison. And that's what we've done right here. So. Something else I wanted to share with you guys is I am going to Denver um, this week. I'll be at Denver at the uh, National Bison Association conference, sale and show. It happens every year. They did some renovations at Denver at the uh, Western the Stock Show area. They did some renovations on the pens and whatnot, brand new pens, brand new facilities. Well, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be there Thursday, Friday, and the show and sale is Saturday. It's the best conference there is. It's the winter conference. And they typically have year, every year in Denver. Last year, it was in um, Rapid City, South Dakota. But this year, it is back in Denver like it always is. I love going to that conference. You can catch up with good friends and talk to lots of other bison producers and see how they do things and, and listen to good conferences and just catch up with good people. So good time. And you get to see some awesome animals. That's the other thing. And they have a big show and sell. And I think it's probably one of the biggest show and sales of the year. So... I'll be out there for that. Uh, if you're there, stop by, say hi to me. Um, it's a good learning experience. If you're if you're interested in raising bison, uh, like I always say, join the National Bison Association. It's a great association to be a part of. There's so many resources and, and links to, to people in your area if you want to go visit a bison ranch. And then also, you can go to these conferences twice a year. They have a conference in the summer and a conference in the winter. And uh, my favorite is the winter. It's probably the biggest one. And I've been to the summer conference too. So you can get plugged in there if you need any help with that. Um, I always put a link below in my descriptions, part of the National Bison Association. You can click the link and get access to all that. And it'll take you straight to their website. And uh, you can get an annual membership there. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and being a part of this. Uh, and if you haven't, go back and watch the Dakota Pure Bison video of us working the bison. It's one of my longest videos I've ever made uh, that I've ever put together. We had a heck of a time. I love the way they do. I love the way they do things, and they have beautiful animals. And we've got some right here. And I can't wait for the future of these guys. It'll be a couple years. Can't wait to see what how Haas turns out and how he looks and these these uh, heifer calves. Um, got a big journey for them ahead and hopefully that we can make lots of good animals and lots of good offspring right here with these guys mixed in with the other cross timbers bison animals. So as you can see, there's been a lot of work going around the new place here, the Ponderosa. I can't wait to bring all that to you guys. Got a, a lot of different projects. 
we're doing some renovating inside our barn. We're uh, building pipe fence. I've got some help, people helping us, uh, Richard and Trevor, building us some pipe fence. It's gonna have a nice top rail on it. We're gonna do continuous panels. We're building some new barbed wire. We're pushing timber out of the way. And uh, as we're doing a whole bunch of stuff uh, to get this place going. I know you hadn't seen the original farm in Dunbar and Eleanor very much, but they are doing great. And uh, we're gonna go visit them here in just a second, Brooks and I. And uh, we'll keep you updated with them as well. So we're gonna go visit uh, the original herd. We're gonna go see Dunbar, Eleanor, Quapaw, Grand Champion, all of them. We're gonna go see how they're doing and the calves that are doing uh, on the calves that are over there. So um, let's go to the original place. You wanna feed them? Huh? No, you can't go in here. You stay in there. Put it in your bucket. Hey, put it in your bucket. Good job. Nice. Hey guys, welcome to the original uh, farm, original ranch, where it all started. Um, it's good to be back with you guys. I know you've missed this place, but uh, here comes the big guy. We're going to put some cubes out is what we're gonna do. And uh, I'm gonna bring you that in the air. Hey, back up. Okay, let me get up here, a little bit of a safer spot away from you. You can see they're anxious and uh, want some cubes for sure. So, um, uh, Brooks is asleep in the truck. We're gonna, I got a sack of uh, cubes. We're gonna spread the cubes out in a line. You guys, uh, tell me what you think about how we do this, but um, we just spread them out. And I, and I have to uh, just basically pour them out of my truck. Uh, I, I have to pour them out of my truck when I'm just with the door open or out the window. And you may have seen me do that before. I don't have a cake feeder uh, with, with a feed truck, so I don't have to, I can't do it that way. But, um, and this is fine. So we pour it out in a straight line and then basically I put clumps out for them here and there. But uh, you'll you'll see what they do is they'll they'll start in a, in a line. They'll kick each other down the line and eventually out and it's hard to get Eleanor. Kevin and I try to get Eleanor separated and try to give her her own special uh, feeding spot uh, because she is the last on the total pole. Um, she is on the bottom of the hierarchy system. And so she gets pushed around. So we, uh, we try to get her separated, but it's, it's hard to do because if, if one of the others <laughs> catch on that uh, Eleanor is getting special attention, um, they'll run over there to the truck and they know what she's getting. So. That's how it goes. Look at the big guy. It's looking pretty right now.
trying to get your cubes. It's just not working out for us very well. Because the rest of them are following. Uh, I tried to, tried to, it's just so hard. They just go in a line. They kick each one down the line. That's why I spread it out so much, but I had to try to pin my truck up here because they got their uh, mineral block on the other side of the fence because they've kicked it around so many times. Get back. So, um, I tried to give myself some room here. I'm gonna get that back over on this side of the fence, um, but uh, yep, just doing a routine herd check. Where are you going? We can go ahead and feed some to the big guy. Your breast stinks. All seem to be doing good. That was definitely one of the most interesting herd checks I've had. Um, <laughs> you know, I like to bring my dogs out, especially you guys see Maya all the time, uh, my healer with me. But the wiener dog, Ty, my 15 year old wiener dog, uh, the docks, the moment doesn't come with me, but uh, he decided to come to the farm, okay, get out of the house, um, get off the couch for a little bit, and uh, you know, I'm out there and I'm flying the drone and trying to feed, and I turn around and look, and here comes Maya and Ty. <laughs> Kind of unusual to see the wiener dog out here hanging out with the bison. But he uh, he wasn't too scared of it, or uh, that, or he's just getting old and can't see. So one of the two. But <laughs> anyways, it's always good to get out here. Kevin has helped, been helping take care of these these guys. But um, I know our baby girl here, our princess Eleanor, um, our special bison right here. She. We do our best to try to get her some cues, but it's just hard. I know a lot of you are like, well, pin her up, put her in a spot by herself. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that, Bison. Uh, you can't put them out themselves. That makes it worse. She needs to be out here with her family. Even though she's on the bottom of the system, bottom of the pole here, uh, she still is healthy and she's doing good. She just, uh, she gets kicked around a little bit, and that's just, that's just part of life. And that's part of animals, as you can tell right there. So, um, and this is the herd boss right here. This is the queen bee boss cow if you want to call it squat so 
Uh, but Eleanor's doing fine. We can get her off uh, away from the herd sometimes. Kevin can uh, too. Uh, we give him cubes. We give him cubes just about every other day. Give him a whole sack, 50 pound sack. And that goes with one, four, eight, nine. That goes with 10 bison. 10 adults. And that's just keeps them going. And a lot of bison producers do that uh, during the winter time. And they have a bale of hay too as well. All the time. So anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have enjoyed all the updates that are about to come. Stay tuned for all the updates that are about to come um, at the new ranch. Got a lot of uh, projects happening. New fence, new pipe uh, along the, the road, uh, the highway there. Um, it's going to be super nice. We're, we're tearing down cedar trees, tearing down old fence. I put a new automatic water system in. It's got a heater in it. I've got a lot of projects going, guys. I'm trying to get the new ranch established. We put a lot of time on this place. My first three years, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Kevin and I put into it, and Marissa. And uh, this place is in good shape. And uh, what we may do, because we have more land over there, because that place is just a little bit bigger, more grazing ground, in the future, we'll keep you updated with it, but in the future, we may be taking some of these uh, mama cows over to the new place and uh, maybe we'll do that before uh, uh, calving season hits which is uh, for us is May and June so um, may, we may be taking some over there just because of room and there's more grazing ground over there so anyways we'll keep you updated with all that thank you guys for watching us we'll see you next time